Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out today. My name is Shaker Krishnan. I'm the council member for District 25, Jackson Heights, and Elmer Queens. And we are here today to support our parks, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Do we want more park space in Queens? Yeah. Yeah. Do we want more park space in Brooklyn? Yeah. Yeah. Do we want more park space in the Bronx? Yeah. Yeah. Do we want more park space in the communities that have been least served by green space throughout our city? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. We are here today because we want to make sure that we have more green space for the communities that have deserved it for so long. Queremos más espacio para nuestros parques? Sí. Queremos más fondos para nuestros parques? Sí. Queremos justicia? Sí. Queremos justicia. Queremos justicia. Cuando? Ahora. That's right. We are here because the issue of parks in our city is a social justice issue. It is a public health issue. It is a racial justice issue and an immigrant justice issue. For far too long in this city, we have not invested in neighborhoods like mine in Jackson Heights and Elmhurst and immigrant communities and communities of color throughout our city that have some of the least amount of green space. Jackson Heights, for example, ranks 50 out of 51 when it comes to park space per capita in all of New York City. Yet my district, was the epicenter of the epicenter of the pandemic. And we saw during COVID how crucial our green spaces and our open spaces were. For public health reasons, for social distancing, for recreation, for families to get together, for mental health. As the chair of the Committee on Parks and Recreation, I am so glad to be here today and to be joined by colleagues in government and advocates from across the city fighting to make sure that we make finally the issue of parks in our city the social justice issue that it is. And today, as the chair of the Parks Committee, joined by my colleagues and so many advocates, I'm announcing our agenda for the city council when it comes to parks in our city. I'm unveiling a five-point plan to address each of these points that we've talked about just now to show the way in which the issue of parks is an issue of systemic inequality and the necessity of our city government, especially coming out of this pandemic, investing far more in green spaces in our city, especially in communities of color. Our five point plan today, we talk about building a better future for our city. Because the reality is, whether it comes to green space, whether it comes to our waterfronts, whether it comes to the capital process, what we do now as New York in rebuilding the city after the pandemic will affect generations to come. Our parks, what we saw during COVID is that our parks are essential for families, for children, for seniors, for all those to come together and have a space to socialize, to play, to spend time with relatives and to relax. It is a civil rights issue, one of the most fundamental civil rights issues that our city faces today. And I'd like to go through each of these five points on our agenda. The first, invest $1 billion in annual maintenance for parks in our city. Yeah. That's, yeah. Right. That's right. This is the 1% plan that advocates from across our city have been fighting for for so long. We cannot afford any less for our parks. Right now, the New York City budget invests about 0.5% in park space. That is less than the city has invested in park space in the 1970s at the height of New York City's fiscal crisis. It is far less than so many other cities across our country invest in park space. And so it is time that we finally adopt the plan for 1% or $1 billion for parks in this budget. Woo! It is urgent. Woo! Woo! Point two. Plant one million more trees by 2030. We want, that's right, we can give it up for trees. Yeah. We must achieve 30% canopy cover by 2035. Trees are not just an issue of climate justice. It is also an issue of public health. In New York City, we have less than one tree for every single New Yorker. And they're not spread out evenly in our city either. 
This is what we talk about when we talk about the urban heat island effect. Or communities in the South Bronx, for example, or in Brownsville, Brooklyn, or here in Queens too, have far less tree canopy cover than other parts of our city. Where on average, temperatures, for example, in the South Bronx are about 15 degrees higher than they are on the Upper West Side in Manhattan. Because trees provide shade. They provide a cooling effect. And in that sense, they are a crucial issue for public health and climate justice. Last year, more than 300 New Yorkers died because of heat exhaustion. And they were especially from communities of color that have some of the least amount of tree space. And that is why we need to plant a million more trees. We need to have 30% canopy cover by 2035 to ensure that the communities most affected by the urban heat island effect are actually helped now. It is a matter of survival. Point three, create a parks construction authority in New York. Yeah. The capital construction process when it comes to parks in our city is simply broken. On average, it takes seven to eight years to build one park in New York City. The cost of bathrooms, like at Marcus Garvey Park or in Elmhurst, was about $4 million. And they still aren't fully accessible or finished or, for example, have changing rooms and uh, changing stations for parents of young children, like I am too. This is why, and I'll give you another example. In Jackson Heights, we had a school built by the School Construction Authority at a rapid pace, BS398, whereas Traverse Park, with the Parks Department, took 10 years to build. The difference is clear. We need a capital process that funds our parks, that allows building efficiently, and makes sure that we can quickly get more green space in our city. As I mentioned before, coming out of this pandemic, it is more crucial than anything else that we can build parks fast in this city. And that is why creating a parks construction authority will transform the way that we invest in our parks, the way that we build them, and will repair a fundamentally broken capital process. We need this immediately. Point four, provide waterfront access for all. Our waterfront, especially in low-income communities of color, are refuges. They are a place where we can relax. It's also an issue of climate justice. Waterfronts clean, absorb, and take care of tidewater, especially rising tidewater too. And right now, so much of our coastlines are either inaccessible or we're losing them to luxury development. And as a former housing lawyer for low-income tenants, I know firsthand the harmful effects of building so much luxury housing, especially in poor communities of color. We need to be protecting our coastlines making sure that all communities in New York City have access to waterfronts. Point five, upgrade playgrounds in every zip code in New York City. Yeah. We rank number 68 out of the biggest 100 cities in America when it comes to playground space, and that is absolutely unacceptable. Here in New York City, we need to make sure that we are investing and repairing decades of systemic inequality when it comes to playgrounds. For example, in NYCHA, NYCHA, where the processes are where, where repair work is woefully underfunded by NYCHA, where public housing projects are suffering from lead paint, from lack of heat and hot water in winter, they also have some of the least amount of repaired and invested in playgrounds. Yep. When we talk about playgrounds, we are talking about making sure that every community and especially our public housing projects have quality, well-maintained playgrounds. Yep. So all children can yep. play. Yep. That is the plan that we present today. And before I call up a number of colleagues and advocates to speak on why this is important to them, I want to say a few words in Spanish as well. Brevemente, mi nombre es Shaker Krishnan. Soy el concejal de este distrito, de distrito de Jackson Heights y Amherst 25. Soy también el líder de la Comité de, de Parques en nuestra ciudad también. Con esta rueda de prensa, estamos diciendo que el asunto de parques en esta ciudad es un asunto de justicia racial, de justicia de inmigrantes y de salud pública. Necesitamos más inversiones, más fondos, 
en nuestros parques. Pero no solo por toda la, la ciudad, sino también por las comunidades de color, por las comunidades de inmigrantes como la mía en Jackson Heights y Elmer, que desde hace décadas no teníamos suficiente parques y espacio verde en nuestras comunidades. Así que con este plan de cinco puntos, estamos diciendo que la hora de apoyar nuestras comunidades, de resolver esta desigualdad sistémica, de expandir y aumentar el espacio verde por toda la ciudad, la hora es ya. Ahora. ¡Ahora! 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 Esta es la justicia que necesitamos nosotros por nuestros parques. En comunidades como la mía, por todo el Queens, en Brooklyn, el Bronx, las comunidades que de verdad fueron el epicentro de esta pandemia. Jackson Heights fue el epicentro del epicentro de COVID. Pero tenemos el menos espacio verde por toda la ciudad. Pero ahora, con mis colegas, con todos los, los uh, defensores por toda la ciudad, vamos a cambiar por toda esta situación y vamos a aumentar el espacio verde en nuestras comunidades. Muchísimas gracias. Justicia, 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 justicia. Si se puede, con checa, si se puede, con checa, si se puede, si se puede, compañero, si se puede, si se puede. Muchísimas gracias por si se puede. Sí. ¿Cómo se llevaría este plan a cabo? Bueno, primeramente, con este plan tendremos audiencias en el gobierno. Para, para que nosotros podamos enfocarnos en esto, en su cada asunto de la ciudad, para pues aclarar por todo este asunto de desigualdad. Segundo, tenemos un presupuesto ahora, ¿no? Con este año. Y vamos a luchar para asegurar que nosotros tengamos suficientes fondos, 1% o 1 billion dollars en nuestro presupuesto. Y por esto, cada día vamos a asegurar que nosotros cambiemos de presupuesto. ¡Vamos! ¡Sí se puede! ¡Sí se puede! Now, it is my pleasure to call up a longtime close friend, a fierce and strong advocate for park spaces throughout our city, a former council member who understands these issues that we will face now as a city council, our borough president of Queens, borough president Donovan Richards. Let's give it up for council member Chris Nolan. Si se puede! Si se puede! Si se puede! Si se puede! Hablas when you're on poquito. Muy bien, muy bien. Well, it is great to be back here at the Crown Jewel, right here at the Unisphere, which is a true symbol of what our borough represents. The Unisphere represents equ equity, equality, and community. For far too long, though, our park system has not lived up to these qualities as Councilmember Krishnan's ambitious plan lays out. Let me first thank the Councilmember for his advocacy and all he's done in his first few months in office. But as he'll tell you, being the park's chair of the City Council brings with it extra responsibility. This is a borough of parks. After all, from Flushing Meadows to Alley Pond, Astoria, to Casina, Cunningham, to Roy Wilkins, and beyond. But for entire communities in Queens, especially in Councilmember Krishnan's district, in my former district in Southeast Queens, having extensive green space is a dream, not a reality. That's why we need this five point plan. Show us the money. We want $1 billion in this budget now. We need to make all of our parks accessible for all of our families. This is a critical first step and a great way to jumpstart discussions with Mayor Adams' administration, the Parks Department, other stakeholders about how initiatives like this one, Shakeart recommends, can be implemented. At the end of the day, our parks and playgrounds are the anchors of our neighborhoods. Go to 
Jackson Heights and look at our Open Streets program Woo! and how that yeah. has been a game changer. And every single family who calls Queens home deserves nothing less than first class parks and playgrounds to call their own. Because having access to first class parks and recreational facilities is an important part to growing families across our city. Let's think back to how COVID-19 battered our community, how so many terrible inequalities across the spectrum of society were revealed. One of those inequalities was the lack of green space. It's easy to, easy to socially distance in a massive park like Flushing Meadows or Alley Pond Park. But families in Jackson Heights and Elmhurst did not have that luxury. Not only did they not have anywhere to go with their kids pre-pandemic, they didn't have safe options to go to during the pandemic. And that's not only unacceptable, it is insulting. It's also just as critical to expand waterfront access for Queens families. We're surrounded on three sides by water, but there's nowhere near enough park space or recreational opportunities for folks to enjoy, and that must change. And I, I will point to the Rockaways as a prime example of the tale of two cities, how the western portion of the Rockaways has a lot of access to their waterfront, but where poorer residents live, where NYCHA housing residents live, they do not have access to their waterfront. That ain't right. And that ain't right. That ain't right. As, as we talk about resiliency and climate, climate change, our parks must be an active part of that discussion. By planting one million new trees by 2030, and I was happy to join my other That's fellow right. Bellow presidents, both Republican and Democrat, because we understood that this is the issue of the tip day. We're not only beautifying our communities, but we're cleaning the very air we breathe. And uh, Brother Shekhar touched on the heat island effect. Now we'll have more 90 degree days in New York City than we've ever had uh, in decades. We'll have just as- Mr. Farm President, for your powerful words. Thank you also for giving a shout out to our 34th Avenue open street in Jackson Heights. Right. Because when we talk about parks, we think about it expansively, including our open streets like 34th Avenue, the gold standard of open streets in New York City, which should also be park space as well. So thank you so much for that support. Now, when we talk about parks, it is an issue throughout our city. And you're gonna hear today from leaders and advocates across the city that can highlight just how deep and persistent that inequality is. I am so proud now to call up my colleague and sister from Brooklyn, Councilmember Mercedes Narcisse. Um, Buenos dias. That's how far my that's how far my Spanish is gonna go from Elmer's Hospital for 30 years being a nurse. So I thank everyone for being here. And I am happy to be here to support in Queens. We are in it together. Um, this is a public health issue we're talking about. Um, Good parks should not depend on economic status or gender or, or, or you know color of your skin. It should be for all of us in the city of New York. So I am embracing this comprehensive plan. I said in full support. You can count on me anytime in the city council, and I am happy and proud to be a member of Parks with you in the committee. As a mother of four, living in Canarsie with my four children, I took full advantage of the park. By the way, we have one of the largest parks in Brooklyn, one of the largest parks, Marine Park, and Canarsie came in second. I enjoy being here. I enjoy parks. Look at here, look at here. We're all here breathing. This is what we're asking for, all right? As a family, you need that open space. We have the responsibility for the next generation to make sure that we leave something they can say that this is, we had done something in the city council. Yes, I'm in agreement with your five point. And therefore, I am a strong advocate. I'm gonna continue fighting for park opportunity everywhere I go. I commend you, my chair, Kristen, for taking that step. This is a comprehensive plan, and we're not going to go without, from the city council, without making sure that everyone have the same opportunity, whether it's park, whether it's health, whether it's education. This is what we're here for. We're here, 31 women to support you. We cannot do one. 31 women to support you. So I'm here to take every step of the 
way to make sure that we push that plane together and making sure that we all can enjoy our park. And just don't forget, you spoke about NYSHA houses. I have witnessed with my own eyes, as a nurse doing home care, folks don't have no place to put their children. Their children are running the staircase. This is not responsible. We are being irresponsible. This is time for us to do the right thing. So I'm happy to support. God bless you guys. Let's continue to fight. That's right. Si se puede. 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 Thank you so much, Councilman Narsi. Thank you for your powerful words and highlighting how this is an issue across our city, from Queens to Brooklyn, from our public housing to communities all over. I appreciate your support too and look forward to working together on our committee to make this a reality. Next, I have another committee member and colleague who just a, a, a neighbor right over here too, who I know has run all the way to Flushing Meadows Park too, <laughs> and, and in marathons too. So I gotta take notes from you. You <laughs> embarrass me when we're, we're running out there. But I wanna call up now uh, my colleague, Sandra Hung from Flushing. Come on up, Sandra. Good morning, I'm City Council Member Sandra Ong, representing District 20 right next door. I represent an immigrant community where parks and public space are so important. It is free to all, it's accessible to all. I have walked through so many of my parks, my public space. I see families gathered there. I see a safe space for children to play there. I see a place where seniors been dancing and doing Tai Chi from morning to night. I think COVID really accentuates the point when it was so unsafe to gather indoors, the importance of park and safe space like parks. Also, it is not something we just use, spring or summer. I think before COVID, you think, hey, parks are nice. We invested during summer, during the spring, but it's an all year investment and we have to make it a reality to invest in creating more public space and creating in the uh, capital infrastructure. So I want to thank the chair of the parks committee for devising this plan. I want to work with you. I'm going to work with the rest of my city colleagues and with the Queensboro president to make this reality. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for those words, Council Member Ong. Now, another colleague and member of our parks committee, Council Member Bob Holden, come on up and say a few words. Thank you so much. As someone who's volunteered in parks, fought for parks, I've actually uh, secured a park in your district, by the way, Elmhurst Park. We led the battle. That was going to be a big box store, by the way. And we beat that back. It was the home of the old Elmhurst gas tank. That's right. No. Oh, nice. A six acre park now. Mm -hmm. And you look at the population. How many people use that every morning? I go walking up there. Uh, and it's a beautiful park. But that would have been a big box store. So it's amazing what the community can do and demand parks. And by the way, this is long overdue. I pray. I'm praying. I'm going to say a prayer because uh, what I've done uh, as a, you know, as a father, uh, I started coaching little league, started taking traveling teams across the the nation, and, and eventually to even Russia, St. Petersburg, Russia. And let me tell you, every city we visited across the United States and even in Russia had better facilities, parks facilities than New York City. They had the better baseball fields, soccer fields. They had indoor recreation. We don't have that. Every district should have indoor recreation, especially for our youth. You want to cut crime? That's how you do it. Create indoor facilities. Again, you can count on one hand, I think, how many indoor facilities for youth that we have in Queens County. Lighted baseball fields. I have none in my district. So when I would, we, we would fly to San Diego, I would go cross country and see all the cities that had lighted fields, recreation at night, especially in the spring and summer for their youth. We don't have that. We don't have it in New York City, but we especially don't have it in Queens. And if you try to build something, like you have on here uh, a, a construction authority, parks construction authority, everything costs more from, from parks, and usually it's delayed because something was screwed up. I have in my district, in, Ju in Juniper Valley Park, for instance, a beautiful park. Every project has been delayed, from the from the running track, the football field, to the, even a sprinkler uh, shower for for kids has been delayed a year. Every project has been botched, and I'm sick of it. And I'm so glad that this is now. If we if we can get this. Uh, it'll make my time in the council worthwhile if we can get something like this 
and a million trees, my God. How many storms have we had uh, in the last few years that have taken out thousands of trees? So this is long overdue, it should be in the budget. Uh, every every uh, d decade at least, uh, they, uh, Mayor Bloomberg tried to do that. I don't think they reached their goal. But again, many of the trees have been destroyed. So important to the health of New York City. So I thank you so much. Looking forward to working with you, uh, uh, Council Member, because this is probably the most important thing we can do, and certainly in Queens County, the most important thing we do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Holden, too. And, and my kids also run around in, in Elmhurst Park, too, and in the Gas Tank Park, too. So it is, yeah, to your point, they, they love it. And so it is, it is that history, too, is, is important to know that what our park spaces could be, but oftentimes we're at risk of losing them to so many other things that they shouldn't be. Um, so thank you so much for your words. Now I want to call up another member of the Parks Committee uh, from Brooklyn who knows how important park space is, Council Member Lincoln Ressler. I have to say on this day where it feels like spring is close with the just extraordinary backdrop, the Unisphere and Flushing Meadow Park, this bold, visionary, aspirational plan that Shaker has put out feels real. We can make this happen. I'm serious. I'm, I'm 38 this week and since before, oh, thank you very much. Um, and since before I was born, parks advocates have been demanding percent for parks. One percent of our city budget for parks. We do half that. Most cities around the country do three and four, invest three and four times as much on a per capita basis in their parks as we do. And we see it. We see the results. You know, as Sandra said, during this pandemic, we were all out in our parks enjoying our green spaces because it was the only place to go. But we also saw the rats. We saw the garbage not getting picked up. We saw fields that should be great grass, but were instead dirt. We saw playgrounds that were run down. It's time that we actually invest in our parks. $1 billion for parks is exactly what we need. But we need to do more than that. We need to make sure that our money is going to be well spent. Because typically now, if you give some money to the Parks Department, four years later, for $4 million, you might get one bathroom. It's preposterous. The Parks Construction Authority is the way to go, modeling on the great work that the School Construction Authority does mm -hmm. to actually see our resources mm -hmm. deliver for our communities. walk around the neighborhoods in my district, when you talk to, to my constituents, they demand better parks and more of them. This plan can make it happen. And when you talk to climate activists and you say, what's the single best thing that we could do to save our planet? Do you know what they'll tell you? Plant more trees. It ain't complicated, but we got to do it. At every single possible pit, we need a tree. And we need to reimagine our streetscapes to think about how can we put more and more trees. They are magical. We just need to put our money where our mouth is because that's going to save our planet. And I want to also call out waterfront access. The 33rd, my corner of Brooklyn, is a waterfront district. And right now, we are at serious risk for the next big storm. So it's not just about accessing the waterfront, it's realizing the resilient waterfront that we desperately need to protect our communities. And I want to especially thank Shaker's leadership around playgrounds. In too many of our neighborhoods, we're still relying on Robert Moses L. Era relics for our kids to play on. It's not right. We need to invest in our playgrounds to ensure that every young person has a chance to enjoy the communities where they live. You know, our parks are about our mental health, they're about our physical health, and they're about our quality of life. Parks are essential, and it's time that we actually reflect that in our budget and invest. And I really wanna give credit to Chair Krishnan as the leader on our parks committee for pushing this forward. He and I have been in the trenches in Brooklyn fighting for tenants' rights, fighting against housing discrimination for many years. And I can tell you this, when Shaker's on your side, you're damn sure gonna win. So <laughs> go. Thank you so much, Councilman Wrestler. So you heard it here first, Lincoln wants a billion dollars for Fox for his birthday. Yeah. So it's not birthday present, okay? But I do appreciate how you tied the history together too, Lincoln, um, going back to Robert Moses, because that is the reality of so much of what we face today. 
but the era of Robert Moses is long over, and it is time to correct a lot of those historic inequities. So thank you for those words, Councilman Wrestler. Now we have another council member from our Parks Committee, followed by community advocates too, who will be speaking. So I want to call up another colleague from Queens who knows how important park space is, my close friend and sister, Council Member Linda Lee. Linda! Yeah. I was like, I don't know where I'm going after this. I need my water bottle. I'm trying to be healthy. Um, no, I just wanted to thank you so much. Uh, I was going to say commissioner, but you're not the chair. Chair Krishna. I feel like the yes. I've heard this council member roll better. Council member, yes. Um, because I, I think as a friend and colleague, uh, so Shaker and I know each other from the nonprofit days before this, uh, when we were before the council. And I want to commend you for seeing this as a social justice issue uh, because I do think that our parks, um, you know, and the spaces, the outdoor spaces need to be better utilized uh, to help communities um, that are in need, that need the outdoor spaces, need it for health, need it for, you know, just being out and about. Um, I, I actually ran KCS Korean Community Services before this and we had two senior centers and Meals on Wheels program and especially during a time where they were afraid to come out. Um, the parks was a place where they could get together with their dance teams, their senior dance teams, and you know, Tai Chi classes, everything, and just be outside. And I think um, what we need to do and make sure that happens better is, uh, I think the, the Parks Construction Authority, I want to say, is a huge, would be a huge, huge plus, right? Because um, I know no one wants to talk about contracting, but I think it's a sexy topic. Contracting is very important. Um, <laughs> Yes, and, and, and as a nonprofit person who's gone through that contracting process, it can be, especially on the capital side, it can be very, very cumbersome, uh, challenging, time consuming, lots of resources by the time you get the funding and, the ad, and it, you actually break ground like 10 years later sometimes, the costs have gone up, so the scope of work decreases. There's a lot of challenges there. So, you know, the fact that we could hopefully create a parks uh, construction authority would be amazing because a lot of these projects need to happen more quickly um, and we need to have a streamlined process and for example a lot of the needs are changing for example there's a school in my district that has a New York City Parks playground attached to the school um, that school has actually taken on a lot more students with disabilities and their playgrounds are not they're not equipped for the new emerging needs of the students that are coming through the pipeline and so we need to make adjustments like that in a relatively short amount of time and we need to make it more easily accessible for the permitting as well as the schools to use it. I know a couple of the high schools that don't have fields in my district are really trying hard to get the regular permitting access for the students and so whether you're talking about students or seniors across the spectrum age demographic wise uh, we need to do more for um, our communities. We need to do more, especially coming out of COVID. And um, so I just thank you for your leadership. Um, I thank you, Borough President. There's a couple asks I have about <laughs> for the parks. We're meeting about that. Yes, 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 we are meeting. But, but with, it's related to parks, though. Um, and, and just you know, if you look at if you look at my district in particular, uh, District 23, we're all the way out in Eastern Queens. And if you look at the map, it's very expansive geographically, and it's because we have Cunningham Park as well as Alley Pond Park, which are two huge parks in the district that I think we need to better utilize um, just by even putting lights, which I found out how much lights cost, and I was like, oh, I was about to fall over. But however we can make those uh, places more accessible for the community, whether it's day or night, um, I think we need to do that as much as we can and put the necessary resources. So thank you so much, uh, Chair Krishnan, and we look forward to supporting you, and I look forward to working with the borough president or fellow colleagues on the city council. So thank you. Así que es un honor presentarles a usted Vicente Mayorga desde Hace Camino Nueva York. Here to present Vin Vincent Mayorga uh, from Make the Road New York. Come on up and say a few words. Yeah. 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 Buenos días, Buenos mi días. nombre Buenos es días. Vicente Mayorga, soy miembro de Se Hace Camino Nueva York y organizador. Nuestra organización que representa más de 25 mil miembros, principalmente de la comunidad latinoamericana. Somos la expresión del color café que le damos vida a este parque, porque aquí este parque es nuestra casa. En este parque jugamos fútbol, en este parque jugamos volei, en este parque venimos con nuestros niños a pasearnos, en este parque nos encontramos con toda la diversidad 
latinoamericana, africana, europea, caribeña. Este parque nos representa el corazón de Nueva York. Qué bueno. ¿Y ¿Por qué estamos aquí? No solo queremos preservar este parque, queremos mejorarlo. Y para mejorarlo es que necesitamos invertir. Invertir en este parque significa la iniciativa del señor concejal. Gracias por invitarnos y los señores concejales que están aquí presentes y todos y cada uno que representan a diferentes sectores. Invertir en este parque es darle vida a nuestra comunidad. Invertir en este parque es darle vida a la naturaleza. Este es el pulmón de Queens. Este es el cariño que le tenemos a este parque porque hace 30 años yo jugaba fútbol en estas Exacto. canchas y con, con mi familia veníamos acá y seguimos viniendo y ya mis hijos se fueron para otro lado. Este parque representa para nuestra comunidad y queremos mejorarle lo mejor. Queremos que este parque sea realmente desarrollado con la, lo que aquí se propone invertir porque hay que mejorarlo. Porque si no lo mejoramos, nuestras vidas se van a quedar estancadas. Mejorar, invertir en el parque es mejorar nuestras vidas, mejorar nuestra salud, salud. mejorar nuestras familias. Y gracias por esa familia, porque sí se sí puede, puede invertir sí en puede. la vida. ¡Sí se puede! ¡Sí se puede! ¡Sí se puede! Gracias por esas palabras poderosas, Vicente. Where Vicente had said that Flushing Meadows Corner Park is the heart, is the lungs of our community. It reflects all the diversity, whether it's soccer, whether it's cricket, all the things that are played here in this park. This is the crown jewel of our borough and really of our city too. It tells the full story of how immigrant communities of New York City. And Vicente himself has spent so much time here over the years too with his family, with his children. And as he said so well, it's not about just maintaining our parks. It's about making them better and investing more in them. Muchísimas gracias, Vicente. Now, I'd like to call up another leader in this effort from across the city uh, that has been doing great work to highlight, especially when it comes to the capital process for parks, what is possible. I want to call up uh, from the uh, Trust for Public Land, uh, Carter Strickland, to come up and say a few words too. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So it's just a wonderful event. We all need parks. I was hoping that you would uh, mention my sport of rugby, which is uh, playing here. Yeah. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a long time, but we all need parks to stay healthy. And look, you know, a great park, like uh, this is one of the key parks of the whole city. We also need parks in our neighborhoods. And sometimes those parks can be around schools. So the Trust for Public Land is proud to work with uh, Council Member Holden, uh, account, uh, former Council Member Richards, now Borough President, and others to build parks around the school uh, the city at uh, school yards. For example, one we just opened in the fall in Elmhurst. That's a place, as you've heard, has been hard hit by COVID. We worked with the high school there at the Elmhurst Educational Campus to open a playground. It costs 1.7 million um, and it is, um, is now open for the public. So it's not just for the kids, that's important. Uh, we need kids to get outdoors and more, more and more kids, too many kids are on their screens all day. It's not keeping them healthy. They're not connecting with each other uh, and we can change that. But also it's open on the weekends, so you can go by there. You can use the fitness equipment and we can do this in every corner of the city. It's a it's an ambitious plan, but it's also a do doable plan and we can get this done. So thank you for putting it forward. Thanks. Thank you so much, Carter. Thank you for the great work of the Trust for Public Land and schools and across our city too. Um, it's now my pleasure to call up another leader in this work um, that oversees a precious green space for us here in Queens too, the Executive Director of the Queens Botanical Garden, Evie Hansopoulos. Come on up, Evie. Yes. Thank you, Council Member. Good morning, everyone. My name is Evie Hansopoulos. I'm the new Executive Director for the Queens Botanical Garden. It's a place where people, plants, and cultures meet, and certainly we took that to heart when the COVID pandemic hit and we were one of the first institutions to actually open our gates so that people could enjoy the precious jewel that we do have. I'm thrilled to be here and support your five-point plan to be here with the borough president, other city council members, so many incredible groups and advocates who really recognize the importance 
of public parks. And when I say public parks, I'm also talking about, you know, places like Flushing Meadows, but also botanical gardens and other community spaces like urban farms. We have Queens County Farm That's there. Right. And also open streets. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Inspire someday. Um, but I think, you know, what's incredible about this plan is that really it's a no brainer. One billion is not a lot when you put it in the scope of things. And the thing is, you really get a bang for your buck because when you fund public parks, you're funding mental health and wellness. When you fund parks, you are funding environmental sustainability and helping to mitigate climate change. When you fund parks, you are funding recreation. You are funding culture and community, like Vincente said. So it's really critical that at this point, as we navigate our way out of the pandemic, that we look to the future and ensure that our city has what it needs for the future, for the well-being of everyone. And it's important that when we fund parks, we do it equitably that we make sure that those communities who have been left out, that lack open space, that lack parks, that lack resources, get the resources that they need, that they deserve, and that they've been deprived of. So as you move forward, Queens Botanical Garden is here to help you and our city in any way possible. Um, you know, we can help you with tree care and stewardship. We can help bring mini botanical gardens to places in the city that lack those kinds of resources, but we are here with you and with everyone here to make sure that our parks get what they deserve. Thank you. Thank you so much, Evie, for your great work, for the Botanical Garden being such a special place uh, for so many of us too. So I really do admire and appreciate so much your advocacy and looking forward to working together. Next up, uh, we have two more speakers to go. Uh, I want to call up another citywide leader that's been doing this work to increase our green space too. Uh, Sergio Moncata from the Nature Conservancy. Is Sergio here? Yes! Uh, thank you, Councilman Krishnan. My name is Sergio Moncada Leiva. I'm with the Nature Conservancy, one of 50 organizations that make up the Forest for All NYC Coalition. We're thrilled to see the council members plan to plant a million trees and to achieve 30% cannabis cover by 2030. All the while making investments in the care and maintenance of parks and green spaces across the city. Achieving at least 30% canopy by 2035 equitably, what we at Forest for All NYC call 30 by 35 is one of the top priorities for the NYC Urban Forest Agenda, which is a roadmap to protect, maintain, and expand our urban forest for a healthy, resilient, just, and equitable city. Planting trees and investing in New York City parks will help make sure that we're not only adding trees to the urban forest, but we're also protecting and maintaining existing trees that provide benefits today. While the urban forest expanded across the city as a whole between 2010 and 2017, some neighborhoods lost trees. Meanwhile, low-income communities and communities of color still have less tree canopy cover, making them some of the most vulnerable, heat, heat vulnerable areas of the city. These vital investments in planting and maintenance will benefit our communities and future generations of New Yorkers. They will create jobs that will make the city more livable and more climate resilient. Thank you again, uh, Councilman Christian, Borough President Donovan Richards, and your colleagues in the council. The Nature Conservancy and Forest for All NYC stand by your side as we work towards, twin, towards twin, 30 by 35. Thank you so much, Sergio. Thank you to Nature Conservancy. That is absolutely the goal that we need to hit, 30% by 2035. Um, and now I'd like to call up, also from the Forest for All Coalition, a neighbor from down the block in Jackson Heights, too, uh, Land Maniachi. Land Maniachi, yeah. thank you. Yeah, hi, thank you, everybody. Good morning. Um, I want to thank Shaker and all of the other elected officials who are here who are supporting this effort. I uh, particularly love a number of these points. The uh, billion in annual maintenance, the 1% for parks is great. 
and creating a park construction authority. That's the kind of wonky thing that often gets overlooked. But as uh, a councilwoman here said, um, we need to make that sexy. Make the park <laughs> construction authority a sexy issue. Um, and closing, are there any questions that we can take from the media too? Or that's fine. So, like, how long do you think this is going to take to? Well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, question. Good question. Yeah. 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 That's why. Had to hurry up, right? Wait, look, this is, this is, there's no time like the present. I mean, this starts right away, right? As I was saying before, it, in this budget, we need to make sure that we have $1 billion or 1% of the mark. That is the first place that we can start. <laughs> that is the first place that we can That is where we get the resources from for a lot of the issues that we're talking about here, too. And from there, every step forward. We need to be investing in our playgrounds right now in every zip code. And doing that on a five-year plan to make that happen. Now, we're creating our construction authority. That's a larger project, but the vision for that starts now, too. So each of these things are short, medium, and long-term goals. But the answer is right now. That's why we have a budget hearing next week, and we move forward from there. Can you say that in Spanish? Uh, sure. <laughs> la, la hora para hacer esos cambios es... El primer paso es ya, es hacer que en este presupuesto de la ciudad tengamos los fondos, un billón de dólares, para asegurar que nosotros tengamos los fondos para invertir en todos nuestros parques, especialmente en comunidades como la mía. El, los otros proyectos también, con los playgrounds y todo, eso es algo que podemos hacer en los próximos cinco años. También en el Park Construction Authority, el trabajo para crearlo empieza ahora. Pero este proyecto no podemos esperar para un momento bueno. El momento es ya. So, lo que tú quieres es cambiar este anuncio que hicieron de los, de, del budget que tienen para el de un billón, ¿verdad? Eso es lo que tú estás pidiendo. Definitivamente, sí, necesitamos un billón de dólares. Y eso es algo que el alcalde prometió en su campaña. Así que, pues yo tengo uh, la. Uh, la o, o estoy esperando que él va a cumplir. Uh, con, con esta promesa. Eso es algo que todos los electos y los líderes por toda la ciudad hicieron una promesa. Así que es la hora de cumplir con esa promesa. So you got to tell them this is a misunderstanding. What do you say? <laughs> You're going to tell them that this is a misunderstanding, uh, that they have this number up. They, they, my, my view is simply this, that we need a billion dollars for parks. This is something that the mayor has committed to, has promised. Many elected officials throughout our city have promised to that as well. We take them at their words and we expect that they will comply with this promise. There's no okay. time to wait. That's one great. billion on the top. So that's no. Whoa. One, Whoa. one billion on the top. No. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay. Thank you.